Close your eyes for a moment and journey back to that dimly lit living room. The hushed anticipation hanging in the air as you settled into your favorite armchair. It was 1964, and the television screen crackled to life with an electrifying promise of espionage, intrigue, and the unmistakable charm of the Cold War era. The man from UNCLE burst forth from the monochrome depths, leaving an indelible mark on your memory. Perhaps it was Napoleon Solo's debonair suaveness that had you hooked, or maybe it was Ilya Kuryakin's enigmatic allure. Regardless, those timeless characters swept you into a world of espionage, gadgets, and high-stakes diplomacy. As the opening credits rolled, the iconic theme music beckoned you into a realm where secret agents thwarted diabolical plots with effortless finesse. Your first encounter with this thrilling series was more than a mere television show. It was a captivating journey into the heart of the Cold War, a world where trust was a luxury and every shadow held a potential threat. Now, let's venture deeper into the captivating universe of the man from UNCLE and uncover some intriguing, lesser-known tidbits about this iconic series. Delve into the secrets of its creation, its impact on pop culture, and the enduring legacy that still resonates today. So, without further ado, let's lift the veil on this thrilling world of espionage an adventure where spies took center stage in a dance of intrigue and espionage like never before. Get ready to be amazed by the fascinating facts about The Man from UNCLE, a show that shaped an era and left an indelible mark on television history. Television history. The Man from UNCLE, a 1964 TV series, emerged during the Cold War era and became an iconic espionage show. Created by Sam Rolfe, it centered around the United Network Command for Law and Enforcement, a secret international organization dedicated to combating global threats. The series followed the adventures of two charismatic agents, Napoleon Solo, played by Robert Vaughn, and Ilya Kuryakin, portrayed by David McCallum. These suave spies tackled diabolical villains, thwarted evil schemes, and navigated a world of gadgets and intrigue, all with a dash of humor and charm. What set the man from uncle? Apart was its unique blend of espionage, action, and humor paving the way for the spy genre's rise in popular culture. It introduced innovative gadgets and high-stakes missions, captivating audiences with its stylish portrayal of the swinging 1960s. The show's witty banter and the dynamic between Solo and Kuryakin contributed to its enduring appeal. The Man from UNCLE left an indelible mark on popular culture, inspiring spin-offs, merchandise, and even a 2015 film adaptation. It remains a beloved classic, remembered for its suave spies, clever gadgets, and enduring influence on the spy genre. I genre. I genre. In the 1964 TV series The Man from UNCLE, agents and bad guys were seen using MP40 submachine guns in various episodes. However, it's worth noting that UNCLE, Agents primarily carried pistols starting from Season 1. Unlike The Avengers, another popular series from the same era, The Man from UNCLE, had its fair share of action. Stunts were a regular part of the show, and they were usually performed by the main actors, David McCallum and Robert Vaughn, along with professional stuntmen. The producers made sure to use the best version of each stunt to keep the action scenes top-notch. Interestingly, McCallum was not too comfortable with heights, while Vaughn had reservations about water stunts. As a result, they tried to minimize their involvement in these specific types of stunts whenever possible. So, when you watch The Man from UNCLE, keep an eye out for those iconic MP40 submachine guns and the thrilling stunts performed by the actors and stuntmen, showcasing their dedication to making the show a thrilling spy adventure. Venture. 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 In its third season, The Man from UNCLE tried to be funny. They added more comedy stuff to ride the popularity wave of campy shows like Batman and Get Smart, but it didn't work out. People didn't like the change, and the show's ratings took a nosedive. Even though they went back to serious stories in the fourth season, it was too late. They canceled the show halfway through that season, and it never bounced back. Originally, they wanted Napoleon Solo to be Canadian. Ian Fleming, the guy who made James Bond, helped create the show. But there was some legal drama with Eon Productions, who owned the rights to Fleming's book Goldfinger. They threatened to sue over the name Napoleon Solo. Napoleon Solo and Ilya Kuryakin were total opposites. Napoleon was the smooth ladies' man, but Ilya didn't have time for romance. He was all about finishing the mission, and that's it. That's the scoop on the man from UNCLE. 
Some funny stuff, some legal stuff, and two very different spies. It's a show with its quirks, for sure. Quirks, for sure. The 1964 TV series The Man from UNCLE had its share of interesting facts. One notable detail is that UNCLE stands for United Network Command for Law and Enforcement. This acronym represented the organization at the heart of the show's espionage adventures. Ian Fleming, the creator of James Bond, reportedly played a role in the series' development. He served as a consultant during the planning phase. Interestingly, the name Solo, which became the last name of the show's main character, Napoleon Solo, was borrowed from Fleming's novel Goldfinger, reportedly with his blessing. When it came to episode titles, most of them followed a pattern. Except for one titled Alexander the Greater Affair, episodes were consistently labeled with the affair. Additionally, each act within an episode carried its own title, typically taken from a line of dialogue. These facts shed light on the origins and unique naming conventions of The Man from UNCLE, a series that left a lasting mark on the world of spy-fi entertainment. The Man from UNCLE was a 1964 TV series that found itself in the crosshairs of pop culture in several interesting ways. Firstly, it became a target for humor in Mad Magazine, where it was spoofed as The Man from Ant. I, E, this playful parody showcased the show's impact on popular consciousness. Secondly, the character Ilya Kuryakin, played by David McCallum, had a name with an intriguing origin. It was borrowed from a Broadway play called Ilya Darling, directed by Jules Dassin. This musical was an adaptation of Dassin's earlier film Never on Sunday, known in Greek as Pope Tin Kyriaki. What adds a twist to this connection is that the Kuryakin character was Russian while Jules Dassin had been blacklisted for years due to suspicions of communist ties during the McCarthy era. Lastly, the man from UNCLE was clearly influenced by the James Bond divided by seven craze. It hit the small screen just one year after the release of the first James Bond film, Dr. No. This swift response underscored the show's attempt to ride the coattails of the spy genre's rising popularity. This strategy was repeated by NBC in 1966 when they created The Monkees, a series inspired by The Beatles, premiering shortly after the release of The Beatles' movie Help. In summary, The Man from UNCLE had a notable presence in popular culture, from mad magazine parodies to its connection to the Broadway stage and the broader spy genre craze of the time. These facts shed light on the show's enduring impact and its ability to capture the spirit of its era. Unfulfilled Potential, Tragic Fates of the Man from UNCLE Cast members in 1964, the iconic TV series The Man from UNCLE took the world by storm with its thrilling spy adventures. While the show enjoyed tremendous success, some cast members faced untimely tragedies and unfulfilled dreams in Hollywood. The stars who left us too soon among the notable losses was Robert Vaughn, who portrayed Napoleon Solo after his uncle. Fame, Vaughn struggled to secure leading roles, a career setback he never fully recovered from. He passed away in 2016, leaving fans mourning the loss of a brilliant actor who could have achieved even more. Love off screen, hate on screen, the real life affairs of cast members sometimes clashed with their on screen personas. David McCallum's affair with Jill Ireland, who was married to Charles Bronson, generated controversy. Fans' reactions to their on screen chemistry varied affecting the show's reception. While some embraced the tension, others found it uncomfortable. Behind closed doors, child exploitation in Hollywood. Sadly, child exploitation was a dark reality for some uncle. Cast members, actress Stephanie Powers shared chilling accounts of her traumatic experiences as a child actor in Hollywood. The predators who exploited their vulnerability cast a long shadow over their lives. Behind the smile, unraveling hidden depression, despite their glamorous public image, some cast members battled depression. One such actor was David McCallum, who grappled with hidden inner demons. His struggle with depression was an unspoken truth behind his cheerful facade. The price of success, mental health struggles, fame came at a cost for some cast members. The sudden rise to stardom took a toll on their mental health. Coping with newfound pressures, they faced emotional and psychological challenges that often went unnoticed. In conclusion, The Man from UNCLE brought joy to many but also harbored tales of unfulfilled potential, personal turmoil, and the dark underbelly of Hollywood.
These stories remind us that even amid glitz and glamour, human struggles persist, affecting both the stars we admire and those behind the scenes. The Divided Set Feuds Among the Man from Uncle S. Cast members the 1964 TV series The Man from Uncle is remembered as a classic spy show that captured the imagination of viewers. However, behind the scenes, tensions and conflicts brewed among the cast members that impacted the dynamics of the project. One of the notable feuds was between the show's two leading actors, Robert Vaughn and David McCallum, who portrayed Napoleon Solo and Ilya Kuryakin, respectively. While their characters were a dynamic duo on screen, off screen, they had their share of clashes. Vaughn reportedly resented McCallum's rising popularity, leading to a strained relationship during the show's production. This tension sometimes spilled over into their scenes, affecting the chemistry viewers saw on screen. Another feud emerged between Leo G. Carroll, who played Mr. Waverly, and some of the younger cast members. Carroll, an experienced actor, often clashed with the younger stars, as he believed they lacked professionalism. This divide created an atmosphere of tension on set. Additionally, there were disputes over screen time and storylines, with some cast members feeling overshadowed or underutilized. These conflicts among the cast members added an extra layer of complexity to the already demanding production of a popular TV series. In the end, despite the on-set feuds and clashes, The Man from U.N.C.L.E remained a beloved series in television history. While these disputes may have left their mark on the show's production, they did not diminish its impact on pop culture. 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 As we draw the curtains on this journey through the captivating world of the man from UNCLE. From 1964, I invite you to take a moment to reflect. This iconic series transcends time, weaving espionage, humor, and camaraderie into the fabric of television history. It's not just a show, it's a time capsule, preserving the essence of an era marked by intrigue and style. Think back to the thrill of watching Napoleon Solo and Ilya Kuryakin, the dynamic duo at the heart of it all, as they faced down the enigmatic forces of Thrush. The suave charm of Solo, the enigmatic intelligence of Kuryakin, their chemistry was magnetic, leaving an indelible mark on the spy genre. But beyond the espionage and action, the man from Uncle was a mirror reflecting the cultural ethos of the 60 seconds. From the mod fashion to the groovy music, it was an era defined by revolution and change, and the show encapsulated it perfectly. Now, it's your turn. I invite you to share your favorite memories, moments, or thoughts about this classic series. Did you admire the ingenuity of Uncle? S. Gadgets, were you entranced by the intricate plots? Or did you simply revel in the timeless coolness of it all? Your experiences and insights are a testament to the enduring legacy of this show. Thank you for taking this stroll down memory lane with me, and for your enduring interest in the man from UNCLE. Your connection to this series, like the secret agents themselves, is a bond that transcends time. So, share your thoughts, and let's keep the spirit of UNCLE alive. Five. Five.